All right, Matt, it's time for our main event of Bellator 239. This is a great fight at welterweight between EZ Ed Ruth and Yaroslav Amosov. And Matt, I remember when Yaroslav Amosov came into the Bellator cage. Not that we discounted him, but we kind of slept on him because we've seen fighters come in from tech crap in Ukraine and maybe not pan out as, as you would expect. And this is a guy that had a split decision win over the current KSW welterweight champion, Roberto Soldic, which really speaks volumes now because awesome. since Yaroslav Amosov's come into Bellator, he's beaten Gerald Harris. He's beaten Eric Sylvan in his last fight. He finished David Rickles, who's a guy that's, unless his eyebrow pops open and gets MVP, he is a tough out for sure. He's taking on his toughest test to date in Ed Ruth, a guy that's a former NCAA champ. He's one of the best pure wrestlers of all time in college uh, wrestling and in general. And this is a guy that lately has looked very good in his own right. I mean, wins over Kich Kunimoto where he finished him. A win over just, just really tough opponents like Jason Jackson. It was a split. It was a very close fight, which I'll get into a little bit later. As far as the odds are concerned, I think they make a lot of sense. Amasov is a minus 145 favorite. Ed Ruth plus 120 to 303 votes over on Tapology. 69% of voters going with Amasov. 61 predicting a decision. This is an awesome fight. Yaroslav Amasov, and I'm paraphrasing, has said that he wants to test Ed Ruth's wrestling, and he believes he has the advantage in wrestling. I love this fight stylistically. What do you think of this one? I love this fight, too. And Ed Ruth, really, the only trouble that we've seen is him fighting specialists. That's the problem. He's fought Jared Jackson, who is... Jason. Jason, sorry. Who is a striking specialist, and he fought Neiman Gracie, who is a grappling specialist. And he's kind of had mixed results. I know we both thought that Jackson won that Ed Ruth fight. It was a really close fight. It was a phenomenal fight, too. Like, it was fight of the night caliber, if you will. I know Bellator doesn't give it the awards, but still. Ed Ruth's really good all over the page. He has kind of frustrating striking. He's got good power, but not great power. But what he does is he just keeps on moving forward. He's very awkward. He'll throw body kicks. He'll throw punches. He'll throw combinations but Ed Ruth's bread and butter is I'm going to throw my hands to get you up against the cage then I'm going to shoot for takedowns and just rinse and repeat rinse and repeat rinse and repeat it sounds a lot more exciting than I just described it uh Ed Ruth's one of the best welterweights in the planet though and I really do think that regardless of organization I think he do pretty well I don't think he's top 15 guy in the UFC but I still think he's one of the better prospects in the welterweight division and especially in Bellator Amasov's a different animal, though. He's 22-0 for a reason. And I really do like the fact that he was like, oh, I kind of like to test Ed Roos wrestling, because that's what I'd like to see the most. I'd rather not see these guys strike, to be completely honest. I'd rather see more of a competitive wrestling match just to see who is the superior grappler out of the two. This was a stat that was brought up on yesterday's episode of Between the Links with the Lab Math MMA Podcast Network. I followed up on it. Keith Schillen over there from SureDog was correct. Yaroslav Amosov is a four-time World Combat Sambo champ. And at his age and with his record, he's 22-0. He has the same, if not better, record than Habib Nurmagomedov and more championships in Combat Sambo. Which is crazy to think of because they're both undefeated and we've seen what Habib's been able to do in the UFC. But Yaroslav Amosov right now is making the case that he could arguably be one of the best welterweights on the come-up in the world. And I really think... This is a guy that has a higher ceiling than Ed Ruth. This is a guy that's going to go on to challenge for a title with maybe this win or one more win. And I know the division is going to be held up by Douglas Lima taking on Gegard Mousasi for the belt at 185. But this guy has star potential written all over him. And you have a promotion that's pushing into Europe and really trying to expand their market. This is one of those guys that they continue to bring out in the States to garner interest. And I agree with the odds here. I agree with the picks over in Tapology. Yaroslav Amosov, I'm taking, especially where this is just a three-round main event. This has a win for Yaroslav Amosov written all over it. Against a name that Bellator has marketed in the past. It's weird that they, they have to do a fight where you have two prospects. But you got to do what you got to do sometimes. And I do agree for the most part. I don't think this fight's going to be overly exciting if you're being completely honest. I don't think you're getting a title shot off a win. Just due to the nature of the fight. Because a lot of time in Bellator especially. Because they don't really have an official ranking system. It's more based off performance to get into a title shot. Like if you knock someone out with something crazy. You're more likely to get it. And with this fight just due to both guys styles. I feel like it is going to be somewhat of a frustrating fight for the first two rounds at least cardio is going to be such a big factor in this fight though whoever gets tired first is going to get taken down first and it's going to go south very quick from there i do believe that i don't know if amasov sorry if amasov can take down ed ruth in the middle of the cage and i don't know if ed ruth can do the same to amasov in the middle of the cage it's really going to be about who can pressure the other one up against the fence and try to use that to their advantage so i think it is a phenomenal fight i am going to pick amasov though i just feel like over a 50 minute fight like you said the cardio is not going to be as big of a factor he's gonna be able to stay fresh for the whole round. yeah just go back and watch some of these amasov fights the three fights in bellator he's had some insane takedowns that you rarely ever see in mma or anything else i mean very creative and the other thing is on the feet amasov he can switch stances you'll see that from Ed Ruth he'll switch stances and it's one of those things that he really started to capitalize on in his time at Alliance I know he's since moved gyms but at Alliance that was kind of the big thing working with those strikers 
but it hasn't translated into MMA. And sick. he's very green in his striking. He he definitely knows that. This is a guy that, of course, wrestling is his bread and butter. And if he really needs to, he'll go to it. I know he knocked down Kichi Kunimoto and then he finished it up with the ground and pound. He'll switch stances, but it's just for one, two shots. It's yeah. almost like what we saw last week in the UFC with Yancey Medeiros, where he's going to stand in front of you, he's flat-footed, one, two, and then Ed Ruth will sit, switch stances. One, two, switch stances. He'll mix in kicks a lot better than most. That's one really good point that you brought up. But the big issue is his head stays on the center line at all times, and it rarely ever moves. Jason Jackson was able to capitalize on that during that entire fight. And I think if you go back and you look at MMA decisions, a lot of people will agree that Jackson did win that fight. It was so close. I know Ed Ruth comes out with a win, and he gets this fight here in the main event. But there, there are a lot of different things that Amasov can try and capitalize on in this fight. Oh, without a doubt. And I just keep on telling myself, the winner of this is going to kind of get added into that upper echelon of Bellator welterweights in that Paul Daly, formerly Rory McDonald, of course, Andre Korshkov, like Douglas Lima in that kind of category. So there's going to be really interesting matchups for whoever does end up winning this fight. Really looking forward to it. You're not going to want to miss the rest of our predictions for Bellator A, 239, 240, Dublin, and UFC Auckland over there. So make sure you check those out. And as we always say with Fight Name Picks, Matt, let's get into let's it. Get into it.